On behalf of the Bible GPS Institute, it gives me a great pleasure to visit with you once again on this beautiful day, Sunday, and it's Thanksgiving weekend. So on behalf of the Bible GPS Institute board, I would like to say happy Thanksgiving and may you enjoy the company of family. Maybe the gathering is not as big as normal years, but wherever you are, our prayer is that you will have a wonderful time with family. Today's message will be a short message. It will focus on Thanksgiving. But before we start our message, let us just have a few moments of, of silence and then I will lead us into a prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather as family and for those who don't have the opportunity to gather, we pray that they will experience the presence of your amazing spirit with them. I pray, Lord, that you will get us a better understanding of what it is to be thankful. And on this beautiful day, I want to thank you, God, for all your many blessings. Lord, we want to thank you for our leadership. Thank you for the farmers. We are thankful for those who need to do first responding work this weekend. That impact their families as well so we are truly thankful for so many things but i pray lord that you will open the word today that it can take root in our heart so that we can become the people that you want us to be amen so today's message i'm going to take from a well-known passage from the new testament it is first thessalonians chapter 5 written by paul and paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16, he says, Rejoice always, and then verse 17, Pray continually, and then verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Verse 18 then, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, once a year, families gather together, for thanksgiving and for many people or most people it's a wonderful tradition where people are around the table and it happens once a year but if i'm honest with you wherever i go it seems to me as if people complain more than any other year and maybe for obvious reasons we are in a pandemic there's an election in this in america and People are complaining about politicians, they're complaining about the economy, they're complaining about their circumstances at work. There are, there's so many complaining that is going on. I, I do experience it a lot. And when you do some research, and I've done some research about people complaining, and not only is COVID-19 a health risk, that is why we wear masks, but even to continue to complain, can become a health risk because it stimulates in our brain the stress hormone and the stress hormone if it's overly stressed by people continue to complain it impacts your health it impacts your sleep your energy level your your condition of your heart i haven't seen any research medical research that shows that to complain is good for you to complain is good for your health. It's not. It is not good to complain. And I think, therefore, it's a great tradition that there's one day a year that the whole country can focus on thanksgiving, that we can to be together with our loved ones, just to focus on, on being thankful. This is what I want to do in a, in a very brief way. I just want to focus on, on thankfulness. And I think Paul is probably the best person in the Bible to go to if we want to understand how to be thankful and why do we need to be thankful. Because there's no other author in the New Testament or in the Bible that actually refers to being thankful so many times than the author of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 who says, Be thankful in all circumstances. So Paul is actually known as the apostle of thankfulness because 49 times and in his letters he refer 
to the word being thankful 49 times more than any other author in the Bible. That is why he is known as the Apostle of Thankfulness. So on this day of Thanksgiving in Canada, it's good to focus on the Apostle of thank Thankfulness, which is Paul, in his letters 49 times. Now one can ask Paul, but what was the secret for you for being so thankful? Because Paul wrote many letters, and almost all the letters when he wrote to congregations, he will say, I thank God for you. He always starts with being thankful. And that is a sign of a good leader. A good leader always thank the people. Why is that? Because when you thank your people, you tell them you have value. When a, a CEO of a company will thank the janitor, the janitor will go back home and, and sleep while, wow, I have been recognized by the top person in the company. I can sleep well because I have value. I clean everything. I have value in this company. And this is why thankfulness and thanksgiving is so important. It's telling people you have value. I recognize your value. But what is the secret? Because there's so much complaining going on. What is the secret to go through this complaining in this world and to become people that are known for being thankful, like Paul, the apostle of thanksgiving, the apostle of thankfulness? What's the secret? Why is that an important question? Because if you know the life of Paul, Paul didn't have an easy life. You can say, yeah, it's easy for people being thankful when they have enough money in the bank. They don't need to worry about where they get the money to pay the next bill. But Paul wasn't in that situation. Paul had very tough circumstances. When you read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul tells us a little bit about his life. He doesn't complain. He just say, you know what? If you complain, I can complain. And I don't want to complain. If you can boast about things that's going tough in your life, I can boast as well. In that chapter of 11 of 2 Corinthians, Paul says, I've been in prison many times. I've been hit with a whip five times 39 shots. Just imagine, five times 39. His body was one scar upon the other scar, with the scars of the beating of a whip. And three times he was hit with a rod. So his body showed some pain. And also three times he was shipwrecked. There was also a time, he says, that for one day and one night, he was on, drifting on the open sea. And then he says, I know what it is to be hungry. And I know what it is to be thirsty. Paul also realized when he went on his mission trips that his life was in danger. People wanted to, to kill him. So Paul had a very tough time. If Paul would have shown his body, you would see the scars of someone who has been through a lot in life. And yet, he doesn't write these letters with the attitude, please feel sorry for me. He didn't come with the attitude of, oh, I'm a victim. No. Paul comes with strength and he says, be thankful in all circumstances. Paul wrote to the congregations and he said, I'm thankful for you. You know, the, some congregations, they, it was a mess, like the the congregation in Corinth. There was immorality, gossip, but Paul didn't start there. He looked at the good. He said, I thank God for you. And after the thanksgiving, he will go a little bit deeper and, and he say, you know what, this is what is bothering me. And then they would listen. Why? Because when you thank someone, you recognize their value and you tell them you are a human being that I recognize. And when that is happening, people will listen. People will listen when you have a problem with them. But th first, it goes through thanksgiving. So although Paul went through difficult times, he was thankful. What's the secret? And I want to take us to 2 Corinthians 4, 4 verse 15. And that gives us the secret of being thankful. 
because we need to admit there are people now in very, very difficult circumstances. Some are in difficult circumstances because of COVID-19. Some people cannot pay their bills. They, they don't sleep well. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of depression. The suicidal rate is going up. It's a difficult time for many people in the world. But what was the secret for Paul who also went through a difficult time? What was his secret? The secret is in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15. And then he says, all this is for your benefit. The, the, because Jesus Christ came, he said, to die for us, to bring us closer to God. And he said, all of this is for your benefit. So Jesus didn't come to burden us. Jesus didn't come to give us a religion. Jesus come, came to give us a life and life in abundance. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. So Paul is using three amazing, very important words in Christianity. The first word is using here. All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people. He talks about grace. And then he says it needs to reach more and more people. Why? To cause thanksgiving to overflow. And then the next why? To the glory of God. Three things. Grace, thanksgiving, glory of God. So you see, you cannot separate thanksgiving from grace. You cannot separate thanksgiving from glory of God. So when Paul is talking, he had three words in mind. He had grace, and then glory to God. It's not about us. And then in the very center, it is thanksgiving. Because when you understand grace, and Paul was saved by God's grace, he writes about it in Ephesians 2 and so many other places. He writes about God's grace. He says, if you experience the grace of God, you will be thankful because when you experience grace, it is when you get something you don't deserve. And Paul realized God's presence in our life is absolutely his grace. The fact that he paid a debt he didn't owe because we owed a debt we couldn't pay. The fact that Jesus erased the debt of sin, it is all by God's grace. We don't deserve it. So if you realize that you got the gift of eternal life for free, it cost Jesus Christ his life, it will make you thankful. Your most important possession in this world is not what you see every day when you wake up. It's not the car you drive, not the furniture you have, not the children you have, not the grandchildren. Your most precious is something that will live in eternity. And that is your soul. Your soul will live in eternity. And Jesus came to save your soul. And it is only by grace. Then Paul says, you know what? This message of grace is just going all over the world. And what causes it? People to be thankful. And when you're thankful, you sing. That is why we want to sing in churches. Because we are thankful. And then the end result is, as he says in Verse 15, 2 Corinthians 4, is for the glory of God. Grace, thanksgiving, glory of God. C.S. Lewis came to a meeting of a synod in London one day. And he said, what is going on? You know, they were busy talking. And the one guy told him, no, we are talking about what is the unique contribution of Christianity to the world? What makes Christianity different? different from any other faith group in the world. Then C.S. Lewis said, but that is easy, because he used to be an atheist. C.S. Lewis said, that's easy. It's grace. The unique contribution of Christianity is grace, because grace is powerful. Grace says, come, relax. Everything has been done for you. You are saved by the grace of God. That is why no one can boast saved by the grace of God. That makes you thankful and that makes you, number three, to glorify God. I know it's not always easy to be thankful, 
it is as if our brain's default mindset is to take shortcuts. And the shortcut is to complain. It's easier to complain than being thankful. And we need to understand why people complain so much. I think there are many reasons why people complain, but I just want to give you five reasons why I think people complain. People, number one, want to get attention. You know, that's why people want to complain. If there's a meeting and then they complain and they will say, but um, I will not be able to do that. Then it is how they get attention because people want attention. They want acknowledgement. And many times people use it by complaining. A second reason why people like to complain is they want to remove their responsibility to do something. That's why people will say, you know, after hearing something that needs to ask for their responsibility, they will say, oh, it's impossible to do that. They complain. Why? Because they don't want to take re the responsibility. They want to remove themselves from the responsibility. A third reason I think why people like to complain is they it is about to inspire envy you know people will say you know what my boss he's just stupid people will say that because they want to look good or people will say if i were the boss i would have done it like that it is to inspire envy on how good you actually can be this is why people come to come complain is to put them to, to to the front another reason why people like to complain is all about power they will say you know what if i was the leader i would have liked you to be on my team this is how people want to get power another reason why people want to complain it is it is it just becomes an an excuse for not performing well you know people have performance reports and many times we will come with excuses why we didn't do the task very well people will say you know oh the sun was in my eyes you know so people like to complain. There are many reasons why people want to complain. It's probably sometimes, many times for many people, a default setting of the brain. But we need to break through that. Because if you want to understand the grace of God, it will prompt you to be thankful. I don't go to a church service because I need to. I go because I'm thankful for what Christ did for me on the cross. That is the gospel. It provides and promotes and ignites to be thankful. Yeah, we are thankful for the farmers. We are thankful for the authorities helping us to sleep well at night. We are thankful for many things. But what can we do to stop in an unnecessary way to ignite the stress hormone that's not good for our health? I want to suggest three practical things. Number one, it is very good and it's very easy. On Thanksgiving Day, just send one person a text or an email and just, just one paragraph to say, you know what, I'm very thankful to have you in my life. Thank you for the person who I am when I'm with you. Just something like that. Or I just want to thank you for visiting me in the hospital. You will never know what it mean to me. It costs nothing, but the impact is huge. You tell the other person, you have value. You impacted my life. I recognize it. It is so easy to thank people. Just do it. Be like Nike. Just do it. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Be thankful in all circumstances because that is the will of God, the Bible says. Many times people wonder, but I wonder what's God's will for me. God's will for your life is to be thankful because of God's grace, thankful for people in your life. So send a text message, send an email, send a card, or just phone someone, just one person. and Just thank them. Number two, Keep a journal. Research shows that to keep a journal every day doesn't really always work. Just do it once a week. Just write once a week all the things that happened and that you're thankful for. Number three that you can do is to reflect, is to pray. Just be still and reflect about your life, about the many blessings. And then you will realize 
that you will rewire your brain, not to a complaining mode, but to a thanksgiving mode. I want to conclude. There used to be a minister in Scotland and he was known for his powerful prayers, uplifting prayers and, and keeping people in the right spirit. And then one day people went to church, not many people in church because of the bad weather. It was snowing, the wind was bad, cold. And then people wondered, but what will the minister pray today? Because he's always so uplifting in his prayers. And then in his prayer, he said, thank you, God, that today is not like all the other days. You see, there's always a way to have a different perspective and to be thankful. May God bless you. Let us make every day a Thanksgiving day. Let us phone someone, text someone. Number two, keep a journal once a week. And number three, reflect on life. And trust God. Now it's all about grace that prompts thankfulness, that prompts everything to the glory of God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, I pray that you will help us through the power of your Spirit in the midst of what's going on in the world, on the political level, economical level, spiritual level, that we continue to be thankful. It doesn't mean that we are blind for what is wrong. No, we need to call out what is wrong, but not in a spirit of, of negativity. We do it in a spirit of, I want to make a difference. We just don't complain to run away from our responsibilities. We don't complain to get the attention. We don't complain to have power over people. We don't complain to find excuses because we didn't perform that well. No, we don't do that. We are thankful, God, for your amazing grace. Amen. Wherever you are today with friends, family, enjoy it, have fun. This is God's will for you to be thankful and to be joyful. And I want to challenge you tonight before you go to bed, send someone a message. To thank them for what they have done for you. Amen.